Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is present, everyone. Welcome back for a little bit more SPTV, where every day is one step closer to the prosecution of David Miscavige. Um, okay, we are actually, before I get started, I keep meaning to plug this in the beginning of the videos. Guys, I'm getting close to 170,000 subs. I'm going to donate $500 to the Aftermath Foundation when I hit 170K. So if you like this channel, if you're not subscribed yet for some reason, crazy. And if you want to help the Aftermath Foundation as well, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Guys, we're talking about Marty Rathbun. It has only taken nearly 10 years for the information to finally leak about what was the blackmail David Miscavige and Scientology had on Marty Rathbun that they used to get Marty to go back to Scientology. He uh, Go back to Scientology, uh, completely disconnect and disavow all of his former Scientologist friends and to produce these hateful, live-filled propaganda videos for Scientology that Scientology has used to attack every single person who appeared on the Leah Remini show and many other former Scientologists even who, who, who are whistleblowers, uh, but, but weren't on the show. But uh, their focus primarily was just to attack every single person who was on the show. The information leaked to me as a result of the video that I did yesterday about Marty Rathbun. I'm going to share the information with you. I want you guys to let me know if you think this makes Marty Rathbun a more sympathetic figure, knowing what Scientology was threatening to do to him, or if you think it actually makes him even worse, which is a little bit where I come down on it. Um, I forgot to put a link to the video uh, in the description down below that I did yesterday, but it's literally the most recent video that I uploaded yesterday. The title of the video is confirmation Marty Rathbun was paid off by Scientology. Now, in the video yesterday, one thing I neglected to, to be very clear about is although it's been pretty obvious to many former Scientologists that Marty Rathbun had, had done a money deal with Scientology, and the details are in the video from yesterday, so please check it out. What had not ever been overtly acknowledged by Marty or anyone associated with him is who the hell was producing these videos for him. The videos he were doing were obviously professionally produced. It was very obvious someone was behind the camera. It was very obvious there were even other people in the room. He would some, sometimes look around and, and sort of uh, almost inadvertently address people. But neither Marty nor Scientology had ever acknowledged that these videos were being produced by Scientology. It sort of seemed obvious to former Scientologists. It had just never been openly acknowledged by anyone on Marty's side of the table. That changed uh, a few days ago or last week when Mitch Brisker, uh, someone who worked at International Scientology's International Management Base, specifically at Golden Era Productions, for 28 years, um, uh, did an interview and acknowledged that David Miscavige said to him and two other people, Marty's back. And Mitch spoke a little bit about his involvement, um, his little bit of an involvement in producing those hate videos that Marty did. M Mitch himself didn't produce the videos, but he, he, he spoke a little bit about his tiny involvement in the production of those videos. Okay, so I covered all that yesterday, that we finally had our first confirmation that Scientology produced those videos and Marty cooperated with them. And of course, money changed hands. Here's what I didn't say, because I didn't know. <clears throat> Here's the blackmail Scientology had on Marty. Marty and his wife were adopting a child. Um, my understanding is that um, I don't have any experience in the adoption world, but I, be I believe they had custody of this child. Uh, perhaps they were fostering the child in the beginning. I don't know those details, but they hadn't yet adopted the child officially legally. The process had not been completed, but they had custody of the child. The child was in their um, custody. I was going to say possession, but <laughs> that's not the right word. <sighs> Marty's wife was the breadwinner. She was the working member of the partnership. Marty was the stay-at-home father. Marty is known to have an extremely bad temper. Scientology basically had uh, Marty on video either shaking or hitting the child, who was a small child. We're talking like uh, not an infant, but young. I, God, I don't want to get it wrong, but I'm talking like under less than three years old. It, it, I, I'm in the ballpark. Okay, like it's a 
a, a toddler, I believe. Um, but again, the detail, uh, like, I really should have looked up how old the kid was. It was a young kid. And so they had evidence of Marty abusing this child in a way that would have gotten the child taken away. That's pretty heavy. That's heavy. Now, let's think through some sequences here. Because right now, right away I go, <laughs> that doesn't make Marty a, a sympathetic figure. You might go, oh, well, so basically Scientology was essentially trying to get his kid taken away. You go, okay, well, that's heavy. But why were they trying to get the kid taken away or threatening to? Because Marty had abused this kid. Okay, well, that doesn't make Marty a sympathetic figure. And you go, okay. So let's imagine how this may have played out. So Marty would have had to go to his wife and say, oh, oh, someone's asking, how did they get the video? Because Scientology was surveilling Marty Rathbun 24-7. They had cameras in the damn trees. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. They had cameras in the trees. They, Marty was public enemy number one. I mean, they'd infiltrated Marty's life in, in every way possible. That's how they got the video. Okay, so Marty would have had to go to his wife, and they would have had to say, he would have had to say, uh-oh, I screwed up. I lost my temper. Uh, with our son uh, or soon to be son and I either shook him or I hit him or whatever. I mean, it was bad enough. I mean, I'm, I, I don't mean whatever it was, whatever they had. I did this. They have it on camera. They told me they're threatening. They're going to report us to CPS or the adoption agency, whatever agency controls adoptions. I don't even know. And so then if you're Marty's wife, and by the way, they were both engaged in a lawsuit against Scientology at this time. All those details were covered in the video from yesterday. If you're Marty's wife, you're going to be sitting there and you're going to have to go, okay, how, what are we going to do here? Uh, do we go public? If I was Marty's wife, I, I probably would have been like, you're going to go public. You're going to do a video. You're going to say what you did. And we're going to live with the consequences. That's what I would have done, but who cares what I would have done? That's one option. Or she goes, um, or we're not going to go public. We're going to self-report to the people we need to self-report to and see what happens, live with the consequences. Um, or I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to take the kid. Um, or we settle with Scientology. We drop our lawsuit. They keep their secrets. They give us a lot of money. We talk shit about all your friends and we move on with our lives. If you can call that moving on with your life. All of those options are not great. But of course, the options aren't great. What led you to those options wasn't great either. That's why your options aren't great. Um, everything I've said so far only takes into regard, only takes into consideration the feelings or the well-being of Marty and Mosey, his wife, Mosey. Her name's Monique, but they call her Mosey. That's not even the right way to approach this whole situation. I think the right way to approach what was the right thing to do in this situation is the child that was abused by Marty. So, oh my God, this is terrible for Mo terrible for Marty, terrible for Mosey. Oh my God, uh, Scientology was really trying to you know stick it to them. Yeah, what about the kid that was being adopted by a father who abused him while the mother was away from work? Does that get better over time? Now, uh, so, so if you're Marty's wife in this situation, maybe one of your options would have been you abused the kid already? Are you fucking kidding me? Already? When he's tiny and helpless and is, uh, uh, you just lost your temper? Maybe we shouldn't adopt this kid. Maybe you're not maybe you're not qualified to adopt a kid. Why are we worried about Marty and Mosey? What about the damn kid? And that was the blackmail Scientology had on Marty. And if Marty had integrity, I believe what he should have done is actually, again, 
who cares what I think? I'm just telling you what I think because it's my channel. <laughs> he could have gone public and said, look, I'm a damaged person and I messed up and we've been trying to adopt this baby. Um, young, young child. And I screwed up and I did this. And not only was that damaging to the kid, but now it's given Scientology a lot of blackmail on me. And here's what they're trying to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this adoption process. As, and maybe Mosey would have divorced him over this. Who knows? Maybe Mosey would have divorced him. Um, I'm not sure who it is that wanted the, the kid more. Was it Marty or Mosey? I have no idea. And Marty could have come clean, come public, and said, and for the welfare of the baby we're trying to adopt, we're going to stop this adoption process because I'm clearly not ready for this right now. But what I'm not going to do is let Scientology use it as blackmail against me. I'm not going to let David Miscavige make me his bitch again. I'm not going to violate my own personal integrity. I'm not going to turn on everyone I've ever, who's ever helped me since I've left Scientology. I'm not going to lie for David Miscavige anymore. I'm not going to take Scientology's blood money. But that's exactly what he did. Because Marty is a piece of shit degenerate coward who not only abused the child, but then let himself be blackmailed over that to go back and do Scientology's dirty business. You tell me, guys, does this make Marty more sympathetic? Maybe this is why it has taken so long for this information to leak. Because the shit that me and some others have been saying about Marty for the last 10 years, while kind of mean, was the better story for Marty. Better that Marty just seems like someone who has no moral compass and is perhaps mentally ill and flip-flops into Scientology and out of Scientology and into Scientology and can't be trusted and da-da-da-da-da. Better that's what people were saying about Marty than the fact that he was caught on video abusing the child he was trying to adopt. The truth was worse than the shit we've been saying for the last 10 years. And how about Scientology being okay I mean, you want to talk about a degenerate, disgusting criminal organization. They have evidence that, Scienti that Marty abused this kid. And instead of actually just reporting the abuse, which would have been terrible, you know, I, I mean, it would have been, well, it wouldn't have been terrible. It would have been the right thing to do. I mean, it, it would have been, you know what? It would have been evidence that Scientology was surveilling Marty and Mosey every second of every day. Maybe that's why Scientology chose not to just report the abuse. <laughs> how do they explain how they have the video? That's one interesting thing to consider. But Scientology was totally okay with letting the child continue to be in the custody of a guy who'd already proven to be abusive to the child and use it as a pain point, a point of leverage to make Marty Rathbun, David Miscavige's bitch, one more time. And let's be honest, for the rest of his life. So Scientology also showed no regard for the well-being of the child. It was actually the point I was making there. You want to talk about a sick, disgusting organization. Marty could have handled this. Look, it would have been crisis mode, damage control. That's okay. If you're in a crisis, that's what you got to do. Marty could have done what was best for the child, for himself, for his wife, and for everyone. But of course he didn't because that's the piece of shit Marty Rathman is. My God. My God. Okay, quickly some super chats here and then um, – in about 20 minutes, I'm going live with Jeffrey Augustine for another interview with him. Dave Owens. It's like Putin versus, I don't know how to pronounce that name, Dave. You know I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> it's like Putin versus Pris Hogan. There are no good guys. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Mary Sue Hubbard. Bill Franks gave a radio interview near the end of his life. He had some interesting things to say about the death of Shelly's mom. All right. Thank you, Mary Sue. Always good to see you. Um, Jess N. Didn't this sort of come up? in the Louis Thoreau Scientology movie. It did sort of come up, but not to that level of detail. In the Louis Thoreau Scientology movie, was it called My Scientology Story? I can't remember. One of Scientology's goons says something to Marty while the cameras are running about the adoption. And Marty has a little bit of a breakdown. We don't 
to the best of my record, nothing that was said on camera had to do with abusing the child. Marty was freaking out that Scientology even knew about the adoption, which was always weird to me. Of course, Scientology knew about the adoption. They know everything about you. And it was an unusual response from Marty. It definitely seemed like overblown. What? You're shocked they know about your panic that they know about the adoption. Marty knew something we didn't know. Clearly. Derek Wagner. Mar Morty Ratbum, public enema number one. I see what you did there. Um, Steven, hi, sorry, as off topic. Do you know if Yashar is going to release the curiously scrambled footage or does he not possess it and was just shown it? Steven, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, if I do get the answer, I'll let you know. But man, I would love to see that. Even if you can't see anything in the video, it would be, it would be really cool to see. This is the scrambled video of the Shelly Miscavige meeting. But then you have a problem there, right? Because it's scrambled to the point where you can't identify the stuff. So anybody could fake the video, but it would still be interesting to see it. Um, Kathy Ann. And another instance of children being harmed, not being reported to the proper authorities by Scientology. Sadly, not shocked they didn't. Exactly. Exactly. Andrew says, has there ever been an attempt by anyone in Scientology to overthrow DM? Not in, a, in an overt, concerted way that you're talking about, but remember, there was a struggle for power um, prior to Miscavige taking full and ultimate control. Vicky Asnoran was actually the first chairman of the board of RTC. Scientologists have no idea that this is true, by the way. Scientologists have never heard of Vicky Asnoran. There was, there was a power struggle. Um, but once David Miscavige took full and ultimate control, I do not believe at, after that point there's ever been any serious attempt to get rid of him. Uh, there really is no mechanism to use to, to, in place to accomplish something like that. Panko, very generous. Thank you, Panko. Uh, guys, that's all I have on this for now. Um, tune in in about 20 minutes for my live stream with Jeffrey Augustine. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right.